Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Whitmix's webinar, Three Shape Splints with Carl Horrocks. Uh, my name is Bernie Jaroslow. I'm the marketing manager for Whitmix, and I'll be facilitating the webinar this morning. So I'd like to begin with a couple housekeeping items. Uh, first of all, you have a, a, a box, questions box, which uh, we encourage you to use. Please feel free to type in questions that you might have throughout the whole presentation but uh, Carl will be answering those at the end. I'll read them to him and he'll, he'll answer those verbally. Uh, next, if you're a CDT or RG, the webinar is approved for one hour of CE credit toward your recertification. So you'll get an email within a day to two, we're pretty quick nowadays, so probably within a day, that'll tell you how to obtain the credit. I will tell you that it uh, involves a very simple true and false uh, test. So pay attention, but no big deal. Uh, okay, lastly, the webinar is being recorded. So within a day or two, this is gonna be up uh, both in our YouTube channel and right directly on our homepage and in the website, whitmix.com, uh, where you can see there's a, there's a, a webinars link. You just click on that and you've got webinars categorized and this will be up there as well so anyone who hasn't seen it that you know uh can watch it and also get ce credit okay this morning i have the pleasure of introducing carl horrocks uh, carl's been working with three shape from uh, the beginning in 2011 as a dental lab trainer a product specialist and a business development manager in lab uh, scanner sales uh, carl's introduction into the dental lab field came from his family lab which turned 95 years old in 2016. Uh, working hand in hand with his dad, who's been a technician for over 40 years, has taught him the intricacies about being a dental technician. So today, Carl presents pretty much all you need to know about 3Shape new uh, Splint software. So we'll learn how to upgrade to new, the new software and go through a case to discover the new futures and time savings for designing splints. So that's all I've got, Carl. If you're ready, we're ready. Great, thanks, Bernie. Um, thanks for the intro. Thanks for hosting this webinar and inviting us to go over the new Three Shape Spoon Studio. Um, also, I'd like to thank everyone on the line in webinar land um, for taking your time to go over all the new features that Three Shape has to offer um, when designing splints. So before we jump in i um, just want to reiterate what uh, bernie was touching base on um, regarding a lot of content being produced um, during these times this is a great opportunity to learn about everything cad cam and you know all three shape and our partners are putting on a ton of live webinars trainings majority of these are recorded so you can always watch them at your leisure um, but you can really become a digital expert in these last couple of weeks by, you know, watching the experts, you know, the CAD CAM um, elite. And Whitmix is putting on webinars Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 2 p.m. Eastern. So go to their homepage to find uh, registration links to the content that they're producing. And 3Shape as well, we are producing content for not only splints like we're doing today, but dentures and clear aligners and all sorts of uh, the new upcoming indications. Um, and that's on our 3Shape Academy page as well. We have live webinars and recordings. So again, just wanted to plug, there's a ton of content being produced. It's just search it out, go to the company's homepages and you'll find it. And again, this is a time that you can really step up your game in the digital uh, space by you know, learning from some of these uh, experts in KOLs. But today we're gonna get started. We're gonna go into three shape splints. Um, we do have an update to the splint software. Uh, we, we totally rewrote the splint software last year and now it's been FDA approved. Um, and new materials and new manufacturing processes are being included. And I just wanna go through everything that can be done with the new Splint Studio software, um, how you can get it, um, if you don't have it, how you can add it on, um, 
the intricacies of the new software, you know, some of the new features, we'll go through those in the next couple slides. And then some technical information, just in case you need to know how it installs or where to find if you have it or not. That we'll wrap that up and we'll dive right into a, a demo. And I'll, I'll walk us through the whole step-by-step -step workflow of creating a splint in, uh, in the new Splint Studio software. So, so basically, just to let you know who, who 3Shape is, we, we digitize uh, uh, dental applications, right? So scanning with our model scanner, scanning with our interoral scanner, and then CAD design. So 3Shape is the full workflow of scan and design. Um, and then we, we partner or we integrate with manufacturers, whether you're 3D printing or milling. And both of those options are available within Splint Studio as well. Um, Three Shape, we started over 20 years ago in Copenhagen, Denmark, where our, our headquarters is. And as Three Shape added on more uh, products to our portfolio, we've expanded um, employment year over year. We're about 1,800 employees and over, I think we have offices in over 30 countries. Um, and I work out of our office in New Jersey, supporting the North American lab market. Um, just a little highlight of where all the, the uh, country locations where we have offices all throughout the world, pretty impressive. Uh, next, just wanna to touch base on some of the new things coming um, associated with the Dental Systems 2020 release. Uh, Looks like we'll, we're scheduled to plan in June of 2020. And these are some of the key updates with um, our 2020 release. We have an updated implant bridge workflow, connectivity to lab management software, custom Trios order forms can be uploaded to your Trios doctors, um, and a whole list of new features that are on their way in, in probably a little over a month's time. So really excited for this release. Our beta testers have really great feedback on um, the quality, stability, and the and the update of workflow and, and tools. So really excited to be coming to market with that shortly. Now on to splints um, and why we're here today. So just going over the new splint software. So 3Shape has always had a splint software. But in years past, we've had we paired it with an ortho module called Appliance Designer. So if you ever designed a splint in 3Shape in previous years, you would fill out an order form in the dental systems, you'd, you'd scan, and then when you hit design, you would see the Appliance Designer logo pop up, and then you are now gonna design a splint in Appliance Designer, and then output your STL file. That was great, that worked but it was a little cumbersome. Um, the workflows weren't exactly as streamlined as we'd like. The icons, the user interface wasn't exactly aligned with how dental systems looked and felt. Um, so we decided to rewrite the whole software. We started from scratch. Um, I guess we started this in the end of 2018 to be implemented in the 2019 release. Um, so just to go over some of um, the updates of the Splint Studio, the new software. So a lot of automation built in, um, your different types of splint designs, your occlusal surface, how it cuts to antagonists is, is very easy and, and streamlined. We can design all sorts of splints. Splints are called different things, um, night guards, protectors, it's all encompassed in the new Splint Studio. Uh, it's extremely fast. Um, so over twice as quick to design a Splint in Splint Studio compared to uh, Appliance Designer. There's a new software engine, uh, the algorithm that calculates how the Splint gets produced on screen. It's quicker, so there's less waiting in between steps, uh, which brings design time down substantially. And then the option to manufacture. Um, the link of manufacturing options, whether it's a mill or a printer, the materials linked to that mill or printer are all within the software. So you choose in the software which output you would like. Um, 
So if you're going to do a mill output, it then will calculate your burr size um, and drill compensation. And then if you're 3D printing, um, you know, it builds in those uh, material specs as well. So very easy to incorporate depending on what manufacturing process you're, you're using in your lab. Now, the next question is, how does one get Splints Studio? Um, Splints Studio is available and it's included with a couple software packages. So 3Shape, we have five different software packages to choose from. Um, and Splints is included with a Dental Systems Premium package or a Dental Systems Complete Restore package. And in, in the US, those two packages are by far our most popular. Um, I think we sell, when you combine these two packages, I think probably 90% of our customer install base is probably a premium or a complete. So odds are, if you're a Three Shape user, you, you probably have access to Splint Studio today. And then it would just be you know, upgrading your software depending on what version you are on to get access to the new, the new update. Now, if, you're, if you do not have a premium or a complete package, maybe you're running uh, a crown and bridge package or a removable package, we do have splints as an add-on. So as a, one of our a la carte modules where you can add on a module one at a time, a splint studio is an option to do that. So, so just to uh, reiterate, probably the majority of our install bases already have splints and maybe just need to update if you haven't already, or you can add it on a la carte. And then the one thing um, that delayed the release of Splint Studio a little bit in the US was the FDA. Um, being that 3Shape is FDA compliant with all of our hardware, all of our software applications, um, you know, making a future-proof product. When we rewrote Splints, Splint Studio, the FDA deems this as a class two medical device, a splint. So we had to, you know, apply and we just got this approval in December of 2019. Then it took, you know, over the holidays and the beginning of the year training of our partners and um, and resellers and, and support teams. And then it got pushed out in January of 2020. So it's been on the market for a little over five months. Um, with this new software update. So we just discussed about the different software packages, but I have a nice slide that goes over all the different packages within 3Shape. Um, each column is a software package, and down at the bottom you can see you know, what package includes each indication. So starting from the left column, this is Crown and Bridge, but it's also included with Premium and Complete. First and second column is premium or complete. Then we have our removable package in the center. Uh, the one, two, the fourth column to the right is our add-on modules or what's included with our complete restore package. And then on the all, far on the right, clear liners, surgical guides. That's 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 going to be always an add-on, a separate module. But you can see splints is included with premium in the second column, and then the fourth column, either it's an add-on or it's included with complete. So again, probably everyone out in webinar land, if you have a three-shape package, premium and complete is, is by far the most popular um, package for our customers. Now, the other thing with um, Splint Studio, is it's integrated with dental systems directly. So Splint Studio is actually running off of our dental desktop platform. Um, 3Shape has a couple different software platforms. Dental Desktop is one of them. Dental Systems is another one. And they're both linked behind the scenes. So Dental Desktop is what runs Implant Studio. It, what, it runs Trios. It runs Smile Design. Um, and it's also running Splint Studio. But as a user, you might not even see that. It's very integrated with dental systems where you fill out an order form uh, for a splint, you scan your case, and when you hit design, 
it will load up Splint Studio, um, which is actually running off of our dental desktop platform. The last couple of slides, we'll go over through some technical details where you'll see that. But again, for, for your eyes, it's, it's, it's turnkey, it's push button, um, it integrates automatically with the latest update. So just showing you a little video here of how it launches right from the order form creation. Um, next are um, <clears throat> um, workflows. We could design splints off of model scans using one of our lab scanners. Uh, we can create splints off of iOS scans, specifically like our three shaped trios or any STL iOS scan you can design a splint from. Then it goes into the design software where we design our splints, which now is FDA 510 quite cleared. And the STL file could then be placed into a 3D printer, um, utilize those materials, or if needed, depending on the, you know, the type of splint application uh, requested, you also can mill it as well. Discussed a little bit about the different um, softwares. So today it's on Splint Studio, but yesterday or our older version was on Appliance Designer. And here's a little video that goes through some of the step-by-step -step comparisons of designing on Splint Studio, which you see in the center, and then Appliance Designer. And Appliance Designer was very manual. A lot of hand sculpting needed to be done in the software. And it just took a very long time. Uh, we built in a lot of automation or, or features to help the end splint result become designed faster. And you can see here, obviously this video is a little sped up, but design times have come way down. Uh, for a, you know, a good seasoned three-shape user, utilizing appliance designer was somewhere around 15 minutes. And you know that, that was a good time. Uh, you know, some customers were, were designing somewhere around 20 minutes for a splint. Um, now with Splint Studio, you can see, a, you know, an advanced user got a splint done in, in just over three minutes. For someone who's starting off with the new software, even if you have some three ship experience, you know, a, a splint, you're, you're done around five, seven, eight minutes. Um, and then, you know, good users who, who know the workflows, who have designed multiple splints, have the parameters down pat, you know, you're designing splints in, in minutes. So again, a much faster build um, and, and our users are, are super happy with the speed increase. So with some of that automation, um, we built in some tools and some features in the software to help get the correct contact when establishing a good, you know, splint. Um, Splint Studio automatically makes surfaces smooth, uh, especially in conjunction with antagonist cuss tips when you cut the contacts, where in the past you'd have to use the wax knife and maybe the smooth tool and smooth over and back and forth. And that took some time and some clicks. It automatically smooths things. And there's some default smooth parameters that you can you can set in the software as well. Um, and basically all those little improvements is, is what's really taking that design time and bringing it way down. Um, the next is the different types of occlusion. And we'll, go, we'll go through this in the software, but you can, you can make flat planes of occlusion. You can make anterior uh, ramps um, and cut to your occlusion that way. Uh, this is all done by a few clicks in the workflow, highlighting area where you need it to be, um, the material to be you know, higher, maybe cut to your occlusal plane, um, where in the past you'd have to build all that up by hand and then use a 2D slicing tool to, to get your flat plane of occlusion. So, so very easy workflow to work with the software to build a type of splint that you know, you're your doctors or your customers are looking for. <clears throat> Next, there's some tools with enforcing your minimum thicknesses. So within Splint Studio, you're choosing a manufacturing process and a, and a material 
and all of the parameters are set toward that parameter. So much like on the crown and bridge side, where you're designing a crown, you have to design it within that parameter of, let's say, a zirconium material. Same with splints, um, because we're utilizing the default settings from those manufacturers uh, for best success, and, and they need us to enforce our minimum thicknesses. So when designing, if one was to design a splint too thin, you can see here in the picture, we'll, we'll show that in red. And then we'll get a little notification that pops up that would ask, do we like to enforce minimum thickness? We also have 2D slicing tools, like all of our software, where one can draw a line through the splint and, um, and see what the thickness is. All right, so, so next, how to install the new Splint Studio. So we discussed that Splint Studio is on the dental desktop platform. When you run the latest dental systems installer, at the very end of that installation, it'll ask you, do you want to download Splint Studio? And if you click yes to that, it will download dental desktop and put that in the background and link it to your dental systems automatically. Um, it's just a one button install Splint Studio at the end of your dental system uh, installer. And it, it automatically installs dental desktop, includes Splint Studio, and then makes the connection. So just let you know, that's where you find the installer. The installer for Splint Studio is embedded into the dental systems installer. Next, where do, where do you find if you have Splint Studio or not? So you can go into your dental systems control panel under subscription management and down at the bottom in the picture in the bottom left, you see number one, you'll see Splint Design 3DD. That means Splint Studio. The other Splint Designer just underneath that is Appliance Designer. And when you do upgrade to the latest version of dental systems and you do install Splint Studio um, and everything gets installed, you also have the option to design an appliance designer if you like the old method as well. So we didn't discontinue that. So when creating an order, you can choose Splint Studio or Appliance Designer to get your splint done. So you still have that option. So, so after the installation of 19.3, which is the latest version of 3Shape, uh, and at the end of the installation, it asks us to download Splint Studio, and we do that, the software will put a desktop icon for dental desktop on your homepage, your, your desktop as well. So if you see that icon up here, that's where dental desktop is. One can launch dental desktop directly as well, but again, it is integrated with dental system in a streamlined manner. Um, so we can, you can, it links the two automatically. All right, so just some other things. Um, this is what it looks like in the control panel. I mean, this is a little technical stuff, but just in case things didn't work out, if you go into your control panel under system settings, there's a folder browse option for Splint Studio. You can go browse that on your C drive and make the connection if it didn't do that automatically, but it, it does. It may, this mainly is streamlining into the next slide, which is if you, are not on 19.3, and if you are on 19.2 and you still want access to Splint Studio, you can. There's just some manual integrations between dental desktop and dental system. It's not the end of the world. You basically just need to go into the control panel and find the, the C drive folder where dental desktop is installed on and link it yourself. Um, but in 19.3, which I recommend, you being on, if you want Splint Studio, it does it automatically. Any other version in 19, you'd have to do that um, manually. And again, this is just kind of what it looks like on the dental desktop uh, control panel as well. If you go in a dental desktop in its control panel, you go under um, software versions and subscriptions and you will see Splint Studio Lab, and then its specific version numbers as well. So that's a little update on um, Splint Studio. So let me end this presentation.
um, and let me launch my dental systems. So now we're going to walk through a case. <clears throat> First thing we're going to do is we're going to open up our order form. I'll bring this over to my main monitor here. And we're all used to this order form. This is where we set up our case. So for a splint, all we need to do is click on the arch we want our splint to be designed on. We come down to the bottom right under appliances. We have a couple different options, um, custom trays, position. To choose split. and we would then hit scan um, for this demo I'm going to import a pre-scanned model but if you look up in the top middle of the categories of, of uh, the order form there is an option that says design module and we see splint studio if one wanted to stay on the older version you'd hit a, you could choose appliance designer okay so that's kind of where you can flip-flop between what program you want to use to design your splint so we're going to choose Splint Studio. For this demo, I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm going to import my scans. So I have preloaded um, an upper and a lower model, which I will import. That loads up. Then I right click. And then now the option is to design in Splint Studio. So I'll hit, I'll hit Next on that. Now it is opening up um, our Splint software. It's loading the case. And then now it's bringing my models into the new Splint Studio software. And now up at the top, we have our workflow of uh, the step-by-step indications to get us to the end of designing a splint. So the look and feel looks very similar to dental, dental systems, workflow at the top, steps and tools on the left, and we are on our way to designing our splint. So the material and the manufacturer or the machine is all in Splint Studio. So on the left-hand side, I can go down to my list of machines and materials. And down here, I can choose our Asiga printer. And we'll be using the Keystone Splint soft material for this. But you know, if you're going to use a mill, maybe a Roland, you have those uh, options to choose from. And, um, and the software would then take in uh, <clears throat> those parameters as well. All right. so. Following the steps, a lot of helpful tips along the way. Click on the mesial lingual cusp tip of number three, it tells me. So I'm going to click on my first point, and then it tells me click where the mesial incisal edges meet in the incisal. So I click right there, and then again, mesial lingual cusp on number 14. And then the software places my occlusal plane. Pretty simple. Um, so we've done with that. We're going to say next. Now it's gonna bring us into our byte configuration. This allows us to adjust and save our relevant byte so we can open up the byte. Um, so, so basically, depending on what our splint thickness is, we can, we can put our splint thickness uh, options in the, in the category in the upper left-hand corner. And then I can hit the open button and it'll automatically open my uh, byte to the splint thickness. Um, this is going to give us more room to work with in the posterior. Uh, you can always add more, like so if our splint was going to be, you know, maybe 1.6 millimeters thick in the posterior, you know, we can, we can add a little bit more opening just so, you know, the first point of contact in the, in the posterior will just give us a little more, more room um to work with so once we incorporate that we can lock it so down on the left hand side there's an option to lock our jaw position and this will now be our new vertical uh throughout the rest of our design so after that we're going to hit next now comes our uh survey and block out of our model pretty straightforward within all three shape design modules, 
you have the choice to set from view. Um, so it's the position of your model on screen. So the way you look down and we hit from view, the software will then add that new angle. Um, you see a nice color chart in blue with a scale on the left. This, this allows you to see what your undercuts are. And when you put your cursor on the model, it'll actually measure those undercuts for you as well. Um, so after that, we're gonna just continue on with the workflow. We're gonna say next, um, oops, I wanna make sure that we perform some undercut removal. There's a checkbox on the block out step where the software will calculate wax where these where this blue undercut uh, areas are. So I'll let that block out. Great. So then when we hit next, it basically brings us into a wax knife. We see the wax that's been applied. You can turn that on and off. Um, and this allows you to add, remove, smooth for more local retention adjustments as well. Um, so nothing, nothing too new in this step. So just going through, we'll say next. All right, so now it's time to draw the outer border of our splint. Um, so basically with my cursor, I can just left click around to draw the outer border of my splint. Um, if anyone's designed a denture using three shape denture software, it's very similar to drawing in the denture base uh, where it's just a point and left click and rotate around um, our models. Now at any point along the way, once we finish the splint, we can go back and do a fast editing tool where we can then draw the splint um, freehand. And then depending on retention, uh, we can you know, draw the lingual border of uh, the splint on the tissue if we need to just left clicking around all the way up and over and we put our cursor on that first yellow dot and then it creates the full splint and then if we needed to we can come in and you can come in and then you kind of draw in your splint a little bit freehand um, that way as well so pretty simple um, again there's a lot of personal preference with drawing this. Uh, we do have options to sculpt on it later if needed. Um, and again, it's just the outer border of our splint. Now, some things on the left, we see splint thickness, minimum thickness, offset. These are all predetermined by the manufacturing process and the material we're using. So these are their default settings. And we're gonna, we're gonna stick with that because uh, Sega and Keystone have worked out. This is the best uh, startup settings for designing a splint. And, um, and then we have some smoothness settings as well. So depending on how the software will smooth the edge or the border of our splint, we can control that with this slider on the top left. So after that, we're gonna hit next. And now we're well on our way to building out this splint. Um, but there are some customizations to our occlusion here. And we have some raised surface options. So we have three options in the top left corner to choose from. And we actually can combine some of these as well. Uh, so the first one is a raised posterior uh, cut to antagonist cuss tips. Uh, the next one is um, a raised posterior uh, with a flat plane of occlusion. And then the last one is a raised anterior uh, ramp uh, type of design. And it's very easy for the software to build this out. So basically, we're gonna choose raise to antagonist cuss tip. I'm going to um, highlight the area where I want it raised. So I'm just left clicking and drawing on my on my model in blue and everywhere uh, I have this will build out the splint and calculate that area is going to be raised. Now we do have some settings um, 
where we have some cuss tip radiuses. This is how the software builds in and cuts to antagonist. Um, so nine mils is, is, is a pretty smooth cut. If we drop that down maybe to a five, and then I'm gonna hit next just to show you guys what it looks like and how quick it gets built out. You can see here, this is where the software starts to cut into the um, antagonist in this specific um, splint version. Uh, we're gonna go back a step just so I can show you some of the other types of designs. Um, so we're gonna cancel that one out. Next, we're gonna choose our flat plane of occlusion in the posterior. And again, I'm gonna use the same tool to highlight now, this time it's in red, where I want my occlusion to be, uh, or where I want my raised occlusion to be. And you can see that I can bring in my um, antagonist. I can, I can also, I can bring in where that plane is, and then now we can adjust where that plane cut line is gonna be. And then the software is going to calculate that and then automatically adjust that straight to that plane. Now there are some, let me just turn some of this off so we can see it. Uh, <clears throat> some settings, some different uh, smooth, smooth areas of the uh, splint. You know, we got the first one where we see it's rounding of the sides. This is great if you look from the posterior forward to the anterior. This is gonna tr control the, the rounding or the radius of the, the splint. Uh, the next one is the transition raise to nine rays. That would be more of a buckle view, um, seeing where that radius is for, for and aft on the splint and, and how it transitions from uh, one side to the next. All right, so let's leave it flat plane because I want to show you two, two steps in one. We can actually add uh, a, a bite ramp or an anterior ramp as well. And I'm just going to highlight the anterior area. It's going to be uh, in green. Let me turn this away. So we have red for a flat planed occlusion in the posterior. I have the green in the anterior to add more of a anterior ramp. And you can see here how that's bulked this up in the anterior region compared to the last one. So you can combine different uh, versions of your splint as well. Um, so after I, I, we do that, we're gonna say next, it's going to bring us into um, the splint where we have the ability to sculpt on it, cut to contacts, um, and enforce our minimum thicknesses and stuff like that. So the, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into uh, the articulator setting, which automatically populates. We can see this in the lower left-hand corner. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the guide by design on. So this is gonna allow our antagonist arch to ride on uh, the splint and show us where the contact is. Now, I don't even need to uh, populate the articulator view. I can just hit the run articulation and the software will run through and show me all the different contacts in the different angles that we have once we run through articulation. Now, I see some contact points here that we would, I'd like to trim away. Um, we have features within cutting to contacts. If you wanted to, um, uh, <clears throat> let's say, enable or disabled areas of the of selection. So if I highlight this area in the anterior, it won't cut to contact. It'll only do it in the posterior area. So even though it's showing that there is some contact in the anterior, I have some tools to tell the software, don't cut to that area. So when I hit the play button down at the bottom left, adapt design, it's only going to remove the contact points in the posterior. Um, 
and and leave the anterior alone. So a, a lot of flexibility, customization when it comes to designing uh, your splint, especially with these different raised occlusion options. <clears throat> the, the other thing that we have is some notifications that pop up. Being that we're gonna use the Sega printer and uh, the Keystone material, it has a recommend 1.6 mil material thickness. I can I can see that on my on my splint. We're a little thin in some spots. Uh, the other cool another cool feature is if you don't see that, uh, maybe you have that slider turned off. You can always hit the little eye eye indication on the, on the top left, and the software will actually spin the whole model around for you to see that. All right, so. Um, so I said, yeah, you know what? Let's let's uh, let's correct this. I'm going to hit correct, and then the software is going to calculate where all those thin spots are, and it's going to enforce that minimum thickness um, just in a few seconds. Very similar to how your crown and bridge minimal thickness uh, enforcement is. So now there's no thin spots. Um, now I can come in and we can use our smooth tool. If we wanted to clean this up a little bit, we can enlarge our smooth tool. And now I can come in and and uh, turn on a little bit of the um, strength of our smooth tool. And I can just come through and you know smooth things out a little bit. Maybe some of this transitional area needs to be a little bit smoother. But for the most part, it's it's really nice, it's fast. Um, user friendly, the, the workflow and the, the user interface and the icons are pretty much what everyone's used to day to day using dental systems uh, tools and workflows as well. All right, so um, we're pretty much wrapped up with Splint Studio. I just want to go through one new feature because I, I am running a beta version of Splint Studio. Uh, the only real update to this beta version for Splint Studio, which will come out in, in June alongside the 2020 dental release, is the ability to add an ID tag. Um, in the current version, you can't add an ID tag within Splint Studio, but, but now you can. So we can type in whatever we'd like on the in the little um, search bar here. And I can turn my splint over and where we wanna put it, we can put our, our ID tag in. Now, being that this is clear, this will be a clear splint. Um, maybe we wanna make this a raised ID tag. So it'll print. So if you're use, you know, you're doing a bunch of production splints overnight to make sure each one goes in with each case, uh, you can put the patient's name, print it overnight, and you come back in the morning, you're gonna know which one is to which case. Now being raised, um, you know, the patient might feel that, you could just polish that off or, or uh, trim that off after the fact. Or we do have the ability to engrave it, which will be a negative cut into the splint. Um, uh, and then, you know, being clear, sometimes it might be hard to see, but we can go that route as well. And in doing that, sometimes you're you're playing the minimum thickness game, right? So you're you're putting a negative ID tag in, but then it cuts into your minimum thickness requirements. So you're you have to go back and forth a little bit to you know where that is. But um, again, this is an update. This this ID tag will be in the next release. We just wanted to make you aware of um, that this feature is coming. And sometimes we get requests and, and that is coming. All right, so that basically wraps up our Splint Studio uh, webinar. So the presentation, we went over how one gets Splint Studio, what packages is included, um, the f new features associated with Splint Studio, how to install it. Again, it's at the end of your dental systems install. It will install Dental Desktop at the very end. And then we went through um, designing of the splint, 
we're going to save and close this. I'm going to open up my dental systems um, icon. Here we see our splint is designed. Um, I can come down and I can go to our advanced. I can generate my CAM within dental systems. This will produce the STL file. I can explore my CAM and it's in the same manufacturing folder as all my other Crown and Bridge work is. And then I'll just open up that 3D viewer, bring this over to my main monitor. And then we can see here is the splint that we've just designed. Um, so some of the things with Splint Studio is we, we do get some questions every once in a while. Can I design an upper and lower splint at the same time? Um, we are working on that, not currently, even with this new beta release, that's not an option yet, but again, it's, it's in pipeline. And then the other thing are attachments. Can I put an attachment on with Splint Studio? Uh, not yet. That attachment feature, it will be coming in the future, but um, with the current release and within the next release that should be out in the next month, uh, not yet with attachments. Uh, so that basically wraps up the webinar. I hope we learned something about Splint Studio. Um, I'm gonna see if Bernie has any questions he's been fielding from, from everyone yep. in web, webinar land and we'll hopefully get get you some of these answers. We have a few questions, Carl. First of all, all thanks right. very much. Great yeah. job. Uh, very informative. Uh, okay, we have a few questions before we finish. Uh, the first one is, if you have Ortho Studio 2019, will you need to add Splint Studio as an add-on? All right, so the, cost, the customer is an Ortho customer, and um, they've been designing Splints with Appliance Designer. That is that correct? I don't I'm know that, but it, uh, I would imagine so. I'm <laughs> assuming, yep. So the, the ortho team um, will incorporate Splint Studio with an ortho package like our ortho premium. Um, I don't have a timeline for you on that, but we are working on it to allow our ortho customers to have access to Splint Studio. So more to come on that, but yes, they are working on that integration as well. Okay, next question is, as an ortho lab, I'm only interested in aligners and splints. Mm -hmm. Which modules should I get and what are the costs? Okay, um, all right. So we do have a clear aligner um, standalone, right? So if, uh, so if someone's, you know, just designing clear aligners, we do have a standalone module for that. Um, Pricing, I'll, I'll, I don't have a price sheet in front of me. It's not off the top of my head, but I, I can work with Bernie to get you those, those answers. Yeah, I'm going to suggest just, just calling with Mix uh, 800-626-5651 yeah. uh, and talk to our sales or tech support department, and they'll be able to give you the prices right then and there. So, Perfect. Okay. I'll just go. Yep, that's a great answer. Let me just go through it. If one does have a three-shape scanner. Um, when you add on a a program, it could be a little bit cheaper than if you have a if you're just doing a standalone and you're using a third party scanner. But both Clearliner Studio and Splint Studio can be purchased as standalones as well. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, next is uh, I have an Ortho System Premium to 2019 with Appliance Designer. How do I get the Splint Studio? Yeah. So this this um, this reverts back to that first question I have, yeah. I, ha I had, or got asked. You are an Ortho Premium user and you see the Splint Studio and you need access to this. So our Ortho team is currently developing the integration between Ortho Analyzer, which is part of the Ortho pre uh, Premium package and Splint Studio. So again, two different software platforms, they're linking them together, much like the dental systems is linked to dental desktop just like we saw here our ortho team is making that integration so hopefully that yep. will be integrated soon you have any sense of when that might be i don't i'll um i'll circle back with our ortho team on that okay 
-hmm. Okay, uh, next question is, uh, is Whitmix releasing the 2020 version soon? Uh, my, you know, I, I have to say I'm not in directly involved with that. So I don't know the answer to that. I'm going to assume yes. Um, actually, I can probably find that out within a minute or two if I have to run down the hall to talk yeah. to someone. I'll, I'll discuss how it typically releases work. Um, okay. So so Dental Systems 2020 should be out early June. So at, at the earliest, one can get access into early June. Okay. But, but typically the way 3Shape works is we release a version and then our resellers like Whitmix, they'll need to you know train their staff, get their support team up running, test things so it you know it works flawlessly with uh you know the equipment they sell and support we've released the beta version a lot earlier this year to all of our resellers so they've been working with it to like pre-approve 2020 so the re typical release for an end user might be a month or two delayed but the the other thing that you need to check on especially if you're doing any implant work are your implant partners the companies you design abutments and screw tank crowns from, they set, tend to take a little bit longer to approve. So before one upgrades, check with all your manufacturing partners to make sure that, you know, once 2020 is released, when they can start accepting designs from that version. So there's a couple of little check boxes you need to cross off before you update your system. Very good. Uh, yep. Next one is same. Is this is the process the same for a bite repositioner, like a coist type? Um, a little over my head on uh, on uh, splint function, but yeah. So it's all how you design the splint. Um, so for instance, you know the anterior ramped version uh, that we designed, and you know we drew in that that uh, arch, the color arch, and the software built that out. You can design however you want, utilizing some of those uh, workflows and tools, but you know the, the anterior ramped area would be kind of like a reconditioning deep program bite, um, you know, training the mandibular to um, lift upward or, you know, kind of when or downward when you, when you go through the movement. So, I'm not saying that it can or can't be designed, but it's not something that's, you know, a push button and the software builds it out that way. You might have to hand sculpt it a little bit to get to the splint function that you're looking for. But the basic process is, is the same. Yes, yep. Okay, a couple more. Uh, what do you do if your mill is not in the drop-down menu? Yep, so if your mill's not in the drop-down menu, um, Splint Studio, works with specific materials and machines to produce an STL file that that company has deemed, um, you know, as their default settings. You can't change the settings within the software because the FDA likes workflows consistent with design and manufacturing. So those manufacturers have embedded their uh, suggested default settings into Splint Studio, so you're forced to use that. If you don't have a mill that's linked in, um, I would suggest you you might have to do a little bit of trial and error to figure out, you know, in that dropdown of mill and material, you know, let's say you, you, you choose a Roland with its specific material. Um, you go ahead, produce, design that, produce it in your mill and see if it fits or not. Or if it doesn't, then choose a different mill to see if it fits or not. Within all the different mill parameters, they're very close to one another um, with the offsets and the, and the material thicknesses. So you might have to do a little trial and error to go through to, to pinpoint the best fit, but yeah, you, can't, you cannot add your own mill and your own materials inside Splint Studio. The FDA doesn't like that. Okay. Uh, the next one looks like it's for me. What is the best material for a splint? <laughs> if, if, it was I mean, for me, if it was for me, I would say uh, 3D printing uh, a using Verisplint OS, which is Whitmix's uh, splint material, 
which was the first uh, 510k approved one. Um, you know, we have nothing but great success with that. However, uh, this question was to you. So, Carl, what would you say? Uh, I sit, I wear a lot of different hats, but manufacturing <laughs> is not one of them. <laughs> Three Shape, we're, we're a scan and design and open platform. Um, I don't have that much experience with manufacturing of splints and, and you know, what's a better application? Is it a soft splint? Is it a hard splint? I mean, it's up to the user that's up for the you know to the doctor down to the patient level you know what what's best for the patient um yeah so yeah. i mean it, the material is up to you but again we have a wide variety of materials and we are working with more and more manufacturers and material companies to get their materials in our software just to be a wider range of, of options okay uh the next one is can a gelb style be designed g-e-l-b uh i mean basically i i don't know i can't answer that question i don't know what a gelb splint is but um basically the, the the workflow i showed you and the tools that are within splint studio you're free to design and use whatever you want right if, if you want to build up more in one area or cut to another area and and uh, stop the articulator from cutting to one area. You have all of that flexibility. We do, we just have a series of standard design templates, but you can modify them, you can combine them, and then at the end of the day, you have a, a pretty powerful sculpt and morphing tool to add, remove bulk out material to to however type of splint you'd like. Um, so there's not a one push button make me a gelb splint um you'd have to know what that you know look like and then build up maybe a little bit more by hand than your traditional say flat plane occlusion splint um but i would i'm saying assume uh that yes you can do that okay and the last one actually is for me uh it says since my reseller installed their printer can i call whitmix to install my sega max and if I understand that correctly, uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we do these things remotely and uh, we don't do them on site, uh, but boy, our guys are all day long. They are uh, working with installations and, and uh, tech support for the Asigas and our materials as well. So the answer to that is yes. Um, if you would like to know how to do that, just uh, call uh, the 800 number, which is 800-626 five six five one uh and then push the appropriate number for the tech support department and uh, they'll tell you exactly how it's done if there's a cost etc so thanks for the question though that was the last question carl i think oh, we're good sure, uh, good right at noon or so so thank you so much i hope everybody uh enjoyed the webinar Oh, by the way, something just came in. It said a gelb has wires in it. I think they want to know if you can add wires. Somebody oh, um, so that would be done on the after production, right? So there's no, you couldn't add a wire digitally into the software. Right. Um, so you might have to produce this and then grind in the area where the wire is going to fit and then maybe cold cure or attach it somehow onto the splint. Um, but okay. there would be no wire fabrication within Splint Studio. Right. So makes that being after digital manufacturing ad. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Carl. Appreciate it. Thank all of you for joining us. Just as a reminder, if you are a CDT or RG, uh, this is going to be worth one hour towards your recertification. So all you need to do is wait uh, a day or so, and you will, anybody who signed up with an email, we'll get uh, a, uh, a letter from us explaining exactly how to get that CE credit. So, uh, and again, once a, again, the, uh, pro, the presentation was recorded and will be up on our website and in the Whitmix uh, YouTube channel uh, by tomorrow, usually within a day or so. All right, thanks again for joining us. I look forward to seeing you all in another uh, Whitmix webinar. And I will tell you that I'm not quite sure it was uh, what you said was 100% uh, accurate, Carl, about the Whitmix uh, digital training seminars oh, or yep. webinars. They're Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon. 
Monday, well, I think, yeah, I think but, I had that in the presentation. Yeah, yeah, I thought, well, maybe I heard it incorrectly. I thought you said at two o'clock. But anyway, so uh, yeah, right. thank Is this, you again. It's up, yep. And two o'clock, okay. Uh, sorry, 12 o'clock. Yep. Yeah. All right, great. Well, we thank you all very much and uh, look forward to seeing yet another Whitmix webinar. Take care then. Have a good day and stay safe. Thanks so much. Thanks, Carl. Bye. See ya.